Welcome, Tomislav, to the conference. It's uh, very nice to have you back here again for who knows how many times now. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, and your talk today will go into voice fingerprint and recognition. So could you give us a bit of a tease yeah. as to what you're going to be talking about there? So I'll talk about uh, current issues and advances in uh, splitting multiple uh, speakers into separate tracks so that you can do diarization, who talks when, etc. And then you do uh, like speech to text from it and then you do any type of, uh, and not just a deleting, but any type of uh, mo data modification from that point onward. So you can do translation between different languages based on each of the collaboration. You can do transcriptions of the meetings, you can do even better, uh, you can do optimization for any type of the network or online type of the meetings where you have issues with the network throughput because you will send the text and then you'll have from the other side uh, text to speech mm. generation where you can also send the fingerprint of the person initially so that it can generate voice based on the fingerprint, fingerprint itself so that you get uh, on a lower throughput networks better quality so you reduce any noise to noise from the speech etc etc. Uh, and going a bit further on the speech, could you explain a bit the complexities when you have multiple speakers talking at the same time versus when you have a single speaker and how you went about solving that issue? So there are f quite few examples of uh, multiple sp speaker recognitions and they are like a voice added uh, diarization and splitting of the speakers based on spectral analysis of who is talking when. Uh, when you have clear separation uh, or uh, when you have multi-microphone type of environment, uh, problem becomes much easier because through multi-microphone environment you can use a 3D space to identify each of the speakers but majority of, uh, let's say, uh, online meetings, offline meetings, etc. use one microphone to do any type of recording or if you are in a call center there is only one microphone who is recording so you don't have that uh, like uh, space element which will allow you that you know oh, okay this it's easier because this sits like three meters from the mm -hmm. microphone this is one meter and becomes a much lesser complexity of splitting even if they are talking at the same time because not even the voice is not uh, the same strength you see unless they start shouting etc that it may be a little bit issues there but uh, in normal situation becomes less complexity but when you have a single microphone this issue becomes uh, more than, uh, let's say, complex of how you separate it, especially because they overlap in a time, in a frequency. You can have similar type of fingerprinting of the voice. Uh, even if somebody tries to mimic you as a person, uh, the timbre of the voice and uh, all those nasal harmonics, etc., are not the same. So even if you hear a really good, um, uh, let's say, uh, somebody who can uh, impersonate other people, it still can detect that they are uh, different persons. Now, you can use this uh, also option for like any type of authentication where you use a fingerprinting, but this is not something we focus. We try to do this fingerprinting just that we can do diarization, of the talk so that we can split speaker 1, 2, 3, 4, 15 based on each of the individual fingerprints within the talk. So we really don't care, is it Tomislav, is it Ogi? So we really care, is it speaker one, two, three? Later on, you can just label who is who based on like minutes of meeting, etc., etc. We have other examples, but uh, issue with a single microphone and uh, two speakers speaking at the same time, it's quite complex. And um, uh, even newest advances like Whisper AI, which uh, for, uh, whisper from uh, OpenAI, which I'll talk today, which we disassemble and added additional layers, has issue with uh, over speaking at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we did, uh, we introduced a new layer, and it's still in the progress and the training. New layer, uh, in first layer, which does a voice splitting. So, so it's based on audio splitting technology, which we are doing for uh, quite some time, and it's for the music. But we apply the same type of um, issue where it splits audio on every separate track. So mm -hmm. then issue becomes less com complex because every track becomes a single speaker issue. Yeah. And you talked about this technology could also be used for authentication purposes. Uh, so the question here is, do you think that there's more benefit to technologies that do a single purpose and only that very well? 
or if you can create a technology that does one thing rather good, but can then be used overall for different uh, mm -hmm. technologies or different in different areas. So uh, this would be a really good consulting answer. It depends. Uh, because a single person or a single uh, purpose use case uh, will always yield better results. And uh, it can be, it's similar like with the doctors. You have a general practitioner who can do a lot of things, but uh, none of them can do really well. Uh, I'm more inclined of trying to do more tasks at the same time. You can always optimize it for a single task as a, let's say, last mile. So you have uh, a model, like an ensemble of the models where you start with the multitask activities, uh, do like in this case, uh, speaker separation, uh, diarization, etc., and then start fine tuning if you want to fix or you want to execute specific feature. Because then you have a small expert system at the end, which does only one thing. And uh, additional trainings of something which has more co complex functionality becomes trivial. Well, not trivial, but uh, becomes much easier. It takes time and it takes computation power. And for this demo today, we had computation power. But by computation power, I, had, I mean, we had issue with power electricity because all the GPUs went our power limit of our server that they shut down. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's just the training activities where then you do a narrow field focuses to do a specific thing. Yeah. But those can be, again, as a Lego boxes. Uh, I always like to start with multiple, as I said, because you get more even if the quality is less. Because if you do, again, in voice separation, if you do a separation, diarization, you put up appropriate labeling, etc., you can do whatever you want as a follow-up. You can do like cleansing, denoising, you can do uh, translation between the languages. All of those which are, are quite focused to single task. But in this case, multitask approach is my preference. Yeah. Um, and switching a bit more from the technology to, let's say, the business side, how do you feel like the startup uh, atmosphere is at this very moment? And how do you see the connection from when you started to today between academics and the startup community? Ah, good one. Uh, I would say that um, we, well, let, let, first from my side, I was never shy to talk with, with academics because I think even if academia does something slower, because it's not in their focus to generate something quick and uh, repeatable, especially in our region. If you go a little bit more west or uh, in the Middle East, like uh, Israel and Dubai, etc., they have a little bit different story. So academia will push something to the market and then it will create a startup and uh, move it. Our regions and all the European side is more focused on um, research and some advances in uh, state of the art rather than building some of the products based on it. So collaboration, especially if you are able to talk with academia, is really good. And this is what is great with this conference that it started uh, combining academia with, together with the industry so that they can, can share uh, information, they can share what and who is doing what and essentially establish collaboration that you can achieve more because academia will come with a really good, uh, let's say, foundation and prepare it from a tech, uh, uh, first of all, from mathematical side, theory side. Uh, they will get some uh, government-based funds to do uh, research and prepare something. Yes, it will take them a little bit longer than what they would startup invest because startup does not have time to burn the money unless it's in some uh, scale phases where it has uh, already investment which will help with those. But integrating academia together with uh, industry is really well approached and this is what I liked how Western, some of the Middle Eastern or even uh, if you look in China, are doing it to speed up all the advances on a, f a field rather than having something as a paper. Sure, it's, it does sound quite interesting. Uh, and to cap off the interview, as someone who's attended the conference many times, what do you think is the main benefit of conference, of data science conference and conferences like this? For me, uh, the main benefit is networking. So uh, technology, etc., which are on the first days of the conference are always focused on some specific tasks and I don't see this for professional users as something where you will have a hundred people attending some technology, technology sessions. But you'll have five, ten really eager who want to uh, gain something new and uh, upscale and this should always be as entry into conference, either like a open track like we have it now or even some commercially 
done by companies who will push some specific things that they can onboard people on a new advanced on the market. But the biggest uh, positive of this type of conference is that, first of all, it's not online anymore. <laughs> so we have, as a, a social being, that ability to mingle with others who are doing something. And uh, you'll hear what somebody is doing. Yes, potentially you already did the research papers and uh, read all of it. But you'll start talking about some nuances, etc., etc. You'll find a way how to collaborate with others. And this is the biggest strength of the conference because there is a lot of smart people from industry, from academia, and the ability to meet them at a single place. Yeah. Well, thank you for the words. And I do hope you've enjoyed the conference so far. And I look forward to your talk later on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Data Science Conference. Europe 2022. My name is Tomislav Križan and I'm CEO and AI team lead in a company called Atomic Intelligence. And let's change the world with the data.